Hey everyone, so it's Hoth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be reacting to Jacqueline Glenn's video on how to practice witchcraft. So this is a couple into my series of reacting to videos. Now, I don't do these reaction videos for the purpose of harming or bringing negativity to the people involved. Instead, I just want to share a little bit of insight from a practicing witch about the topic of witchcraft in regards to the videos that I'm going to be talking about. So a little bit of background to me. Hello, my name is Hearth. I've been a practicing witch for the last 15-ish years. I kind of lose track of the months, honestly. And I am here mainly just to spread awareness for witchcraft and talk about what it is and some of the misconceptions that are often spread in this style of video. Now, the videos that I react to, they are often done by people who are looking at witchcraft from an outside perspective, and they almost try to make them a one-stop shop for witches and beginners that often are curious about witchcraft. And I'm always interested to see how much good information is actually in these videos, and is it portrayed in a way that's going to help or hinder the magical community. Now, I'm gonna shuffle myself to one side so that I can put the screen right around here so that you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing as well. Now, as with all of these videos, I am not intending to bash the person at all. The person that did this video is actually Jacqueline Glenn. Now, I love Jacqueline Glenn. I will happily put my hands up and say I love Jacqueline Glenn. I love her content. So this is in no way designed to bring negativity to Jacqueline. I'm just curious about the kind of content of this video. Okay, enough talking. Let's get on with this video. Now this is apparently the video that BuzzFeed stole, so I watched, the first reaction that I did was a BuzzFeed video, I'll put a playlist up here of all of the reaction videos I've done if you guys want to see them. The first one that I did was on BuzzFeed's We Practice Magic with a Real Witch, and apparently, according to the comments on that video that I did, it was actually almost ripped off Jacqueline, so I'm going to be curious to see whether or not it is. Now I have seen Jacqueline's video once when it came out in 2017-ish, so we'll have to see just how similar it actually is. On this episode of the Skeptic's Guide to Wellness, I'm traveling to a magical, mystical land where I'll convene with witches and heretics as I learn to cast spells, speak incantations, and seal spirits. Okay, straight away. One, I already knew going into this that Jacqueline is a skeptic. The original show series, I think it was on full screen when that was still a thing, was called The Skeptic's Guide to Wellness. She did a couple of episodes on there, this is just one of them. And I know that she is a skeptic going into this, so I know that I'm going to have to expect her to be a little bit antsy with the whole thing. That's not really the right word, but I hope you get what I mean by that. But immediately, I can see they are in the same shop as BuzzFeed went into, which is the Green Man shop in California. Um, immediately, straight away, the people are the same, the shop is the same, so I'm questioning whether the information is all going to be the same and whether the misinformation is going to all be the same. So we'll have to see, but that is the first immediate thing is that they're in the exact same shop that BuzzFeed went to, um, which means it's likely going to be the same information from the same people and you guys know how I felt about that. So we'll just have to see. The term witchcraft conjures many images. Cauldrons, brooms, curses, Salem, Harry Potter, it's all over the map. But in the real world, it's all over the map. Those who practice it today are generally referred to as neo-pagans and under- No. Mm -mm -mm. Immediately no, I don't like that. Um, witchcraft and neo-paganism are two different things. So essentially, paganism is the pre-Christian religious beliefs. The term pagan often refers to like, of the countryside, of the land, so it was often the religions of the people that worked with the land, on the land, for the land, you know, those kind of religions. Nowadays, paganism is often considered to be um, the pre-Christian, non-Abrahamic faiths. That definition varies person to person, but that tends to be what it's classified as. Neo-paganism is what we believe 
paganism to be. So a lot of the pagans that practice today, that, that follow the religions today, are following what they believe paganism to be. Because unfortunately a lot of the records, especially from certain areas of the world, were essentially wiped out when Christians kind of took over the area. So we don't fully know, at least for most of the pagan religions, we don't know fully what the practice and beliefs were. So neo-paganism is the new kind of rebirth of those pre-Christian religions, often land-based religions. Witchcraft, that is a craft. It is a, a practice. It's not a religion in itself. It is just a practice. It's a bit like um, art or music. It's something that you do. It's not something you are. Neo-paganism is something you are, it's about your beliefs, it's about your religion. So you can be both neo-pagan and a witch, but you can also just be a witch. You can be a witch and a Christian, you can be a witch and a Hindu, you can be a witch and a Buddhist. You don't have to attach neo-pagan onto it unless you want to. So witchcraft in itself is secular. It has no religion unless you choose to attach a religion onto it. So that's the first red flag. That I'm seeing here is definitely seems like they're going to be confusing Wicca and Witchcraft again and you know that that's my pet peeve with all of these. Under that term are multiple sects with multiple belief structures all of which have similarities but none of which share the same exact practices. I need some help wrapping my head around what witches and their magical work can mean for wellness. Luckily I know just the place. First thing I want is to get on that broom. A lot of this stuff is kind of scary looking. Apparently, I guess this is a horned beast. We've got dream catchers. Lots of rocks. I wonder if these are enchanted. Oh my god. Is this a penis? Immediately going into this, the same things kind of come up. Oh, I wish I could ride that broom. Oh look, it's a horned beast. I know it's kind of an instinctual reaction, especially if you're from outside of the pagan traditions or witchcraft in general. Yeah, and immediately straight to the penis candles. It seems as though every one of these kind of videos, especially because BuzzFeed, by the looks of it, really did just kind of take the entire idea of this video straight off Jacqueline. Um, they all follow the same kind of route of, oh look, broomstick, oh look, horned deity of some kind, oh look, penis candles. <laughs> oh dear. And skulls. I'm guessing you're Griffin. I am. I'm Jacqueline. Please meet you, Jacqueline. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Welcome to the Green Man. I don't know what I expected to see whenever I met my first witch, but he was definitely not what I thought. Just this, you know, British dude with white hair, he had gauges in his ears, shorts, and a Hawaiian shirt. Not my idea of a witch. See, I kind of, I like the fact that they, they've done that. So they spoke to a different person this time. So on the last video where they went to the Green Man, they spoke to, um, I think she's one of the owners. And that was the, the one person they spoke to. This time they've spoken to Griffin, which I really like. I like the fact that it is a different person. I can definitely appreciate that. And yes, so glad that she mentioned it. Witches, nine times out of ten, don't look like what you think that they would look like. So, guarantee you, every single person watching this video has walked past a witch at some point in their life. Probably many, many witches. And you have never noticed because the stereotype is long flowing dresses, pointy hats, very almost medieval in style, whereas most witches blend in completely with everyone else. Some of us will wear jewellery like pentacles, some of us will wear rings, oh here it is on this hand, some of us will wear rings, some of us will wear jewellery that represents our spirituality, some of us will wear the full, you know, garb on a day-to-day -day basis, but most of us don't. So I like the fact that they mentioned that, I like the fact that the staff also didn't feel the need to get dressed up in the garb, as I like to describe it, for witchcraft. Instead, he's dressed as he would normally dress on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I do really like that because a lot of people do have this stereotype of, oh, a witch looks like this, when actually a witch can look like anyone and, you know I'm happy about it, a male witch. Yes. Out of all of the videos I've ever watched, it's actually quite uncommon to find a male witch being represented in the videos, so the fact that they are talking to one, I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate.
So. What does witchcraft mean to you? Witchcraft uh, basically means that I have a relationship with the spirit of divine and the spirit in life, the spirit of all aspects of life. All right. It's that simple, really. <laughs> See, I quite like that way of describing it. Like, obviously every witch is going to be slightly different. You know, some witches will work with deities, some will work with spirits, some will work with fairies, some will work with ancestors, some will just work with the energy of the elements, some will work just with the energy of the earth. It's very lower, kind of natural, organic process. I like the fact that he described that then as it's about having that connection. So he obviously has a connection with deities of some kind. But I like the fact that he said there, it's a connection to the spirit in everything. Now, not everyone follows the animist approach, which is the belief that everything, um, whether um, organic or inorganic, has that essence, that life in it that you can then work with. A lot of traditions do include animism, but not all. But I like the fact that he included that, even if you don't necessarily believe in the soul in everything or the spirit in everything. A lot of witches do work with the energy in everything, whether that be herbs, whether that be crystals, whether that be the energy of time and space, location, moon phase, whatever it might be. So I actually really like his description there. I think that's a really nice, simple way of putting it. It is definitely very simplified, but it is an 11 minute long video. So I can't really blame them for simplifying it this far. Because we are the channels through which change happens, a lot of what we do is about bringing about a shift in the quality of a person through subtle exposure to other spirits and qualities. That's what we practice, and we call it magic. Is that an offensive term? Magic? No. Okay. Witch is okay? Yeah. Witchcraft is witch. okay? What about warlock? Depends who you're talking to. What about wizard? Okay, I like that, yes. I really like that. So, I like this guy a lot, actually. I really, really like him. So, the term warlock, it has kind of ever-shifting meanings. So, within... Tradition, warlock was an oath breaker. That's what it means. It's someone who broke out of ceremonial oath. Um, but I feel as though it's slowly changing. I'm noticing more and more um, people using the term warlock to represent themselves, not in a negative way, just in a way that is different from the term witch. So the term witch is gender neutral. Anyone can use it, no matter what you represent as, no matter what you present as, you can use the word witch. Um, Warlock, a lot of men now are starting to use the term warlock to describe themselves even though it does have that connotation to mean oathbreaker. But as he said there, it seems to very much depend on the person. Those that follow a more traditional path will stay away often from the term warlock. Whereas those that are kind of coming into it from a, an outside perspective or they're coming into a different form of the practice, it's not kind of traditional witchcraft, I'm finding more and more people using the term warlock, so I like the fact that he's very open with it, how he said, you know, it depends who you talk to, because it really does. I can talk to 15 different people and they will all give me a slightly different version of how they feel warlock represents the community in one way, shape or form, so I like that. I, I really like him, actually. I think he's really good in this. <laughs> Wizard makes me giggle. Okay. I mean, if you think you're going to do a spell and things are going to fly around in the air and all that kind of, that's fantasy, yeah. that's Hollywood. That's what I wanted to happen today. Yeah. Yes! Okay, yes, 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 yes. Straight away, I, I do agree with that. The term wizard, some people do use it to describe themselves. As far as a lot of people go, it is kind of the term that represents, you know, fantasy magic, you know, Harry Potter, broomsticks flying around, and um, levitating things, that kind of stuff. So I like the fact that in this, he's kind of immediately gone, you know, that's not what it is. If that's what you're expecting, it's not what it is. So I really like the fact that they immediately brought that up, like, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Hilda, you know the stuff flying around? No, unfortunately not. The stuff flying around. Craft spells? Oh yeah. And make potions? Yeah, we do that as part of our service. Spellcraft for me is if something has a certain quality of being and you bring another quality of, of being into collision with it, then it brings about a shift between the two and that's spellcraft. Interesting. Okay. For example, Okay, so I like the way he described that there. So it's a different way than I typically describe it, but I, I do like the way he's described it. So um, the way I personally describe it is that you are adding different layers of intention. So everything you add into that working, whether it's your own energy or the energy of objects like herbs, crystals, petitions, charms, items, you know, whatever it might be, it adds different layers of intention into that. And when you're working with these different energies, you are ultimately creating a shift. 
So that's when you begin to see a physical change, when these shifts, these energetic shifts, begin trickling over into the physical plane. So I really like the way he's described it. It's a little, for me anyway, it's a little confusing, but I do know what he's getting at, so I do, I do like that. You can go into a room that's a great cocktail party, everyone's enjoying themselves, and you go in in a temper tantrum and everyone gets pissed. Suddenly the, the spirit of the room shifts. Mm -hmm. That changing of the spirit of the room brings about a, a change in, in manifestation, in, in what's going on in that room. Mm -hmm. He tried to say that spells could be basically anything. Like, for example, if you put bright colors in a room and that makes someone feel more cheerful, he's like, well, that's magic. But no. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. He's trying to take a very complex process and simplify it to the point where a layman, someone who's never experienced any magical tradition before, is going to understand it. So, yes, painting a room yellow is going to make it look sunny. That isn't a spell. That's not what he's trying to say. And this is my issue with videos like this, is that a lot of the time, they're doing their best to simplify a very complicated process that takes a long time to fully wrap your head around into a small little sentence that they can use to describe it to someone else. So what he's trying to say here is that when you add these different things in, these layers of energy in, it then shifts the energy of the place. That's why talismans, amulets are used. You carry things that are sacred to help shift your energy you might sage a room to shift the energy of the room so that it alters in a way to improve or reduce whatever it is that you're trying to do. So if you want to bring romantic energy into a space, you might want to create a, an item like a mojo bag or a sachet work of some kind. You're going to want it to be a red collar and inside you might want to add lodestones, rose petals, hibiscus, um, lemon balm, you might want to add a petition in there, you might want to add in some love oil, you might place it in a certain place that's going to attract the energy in even more and by adding those layers in and by placing it within that space you are shifting the energy in the room and the way that he chose to describe that to her was it's similar to if someone that's in a really foul mood walks into a party suddenly everyone starts feeling that shift, they start feeling that uncomfortable energy. That's similar to what it is like when you put an, an item that is charged with energy into a space. It shifts the energy and other people and other things in that room can feel that shift of energy. Even if they don't necessarily know it's there, there's something different that you can feel in the space. That's what he's trying to explain. And immediately she's gone, well, no, that's not magic, that's just science. It's like, well, no, he's he's trying to simplify a very complex process down for a layman. You're not meant to take the description he just used literally, he's using it as an example. It's science. Do people come in for uh, ailments that they might have? That's a really tricky area for us because okay. the law in, in California says that that's okay for them to work magic in the church, but when we do it, we have to have a sign up saying for entertainment purposes only. What we can do is we can help a person change the circumstances of their life mm -hmm. so that their overall well-being will shift. And then that I actually agree with. Okay. Because I think if you're sick, you need to go see a doctor. At no point did they ever claim that what they do there could ever be or should ever be used as a substitute for, you know, Western medicine. And I think there is some good in that. Okay, okay, now that I do agree with right there. Um, that is my stance on it as well. Some people will disagree, some people will be like, oh no, magic can be used for everything. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, magic is an assistant, it's not a fix-all. If you have an ailment that is something wrong with you, whether short-term or long-term, magic can be used to help, it cannot be used to fix. So always go to a doctor. If you still then want to use magic alongside that, you can if you want to, but you shouldn't use it as a replacement. And that's where a lot of my issues lie. A lot of the fake spellcasters that you see, they post everywhere. They post in the comment section of my YouTube channel. I try to delete them as quickly as possible, but you see them everywhere. You know, oh, um, doctor something or other can cure AIDS and hepatitis and malaria and this and that and this. And then they list out like a giant whop off bloody list. And if anyone says to you, 
that they can cure things that are incurable with modern medicine, with magic, just by sending someone your information for a spell, they are not real. Magic is an assistant, definitely. It can definitely help improve your mindset, it can help improve the energy around you, it can help improve your energetic vibration to help improve healing, but it shouldn't be used instead of Western modern medicine. And a lot of people do go into witchcraft thinking that that's what witches are. Oh, witches, they, they're all back in history, they don't believe in any of the modern stuff. Well, actually, 99% of us do very thoroughly believe that Western medicine is an amazing thing. We just like working energetic practices alongside their modern scientific practices, you know, the medicinal practices. So yeah, I'm glad that he pointed that out. A lot of people in this are, yes, we can do this, yes, we can do that. They're very yes men type people. He's very blunt of, I don't agree with that, but I do agree with this. And I, I can really appreciate that. I wasn't really sold on the magic aspect of things, so Griffin wanted to introduce me to an herbalist who came at things from a more scientific direction. I work with not only plants, but I work with plant medicines. How do you jump from that type of an understanding of the world into a more magical realm. I don't. I am not a witch. Okay, nope. so what what is your involvement with this environment? My space here is sort of giving that other way of looking at the plants. Quite often we see that the chemistry of the plant supports the magical use. Do you think that that might be because people have seen the chemical outcome and then built their perceptions around that? Yes. Okay. A lot of the properties magically of herbs actually comes from their shape, not necessarily their properties. So something like bleeding heart is often very closely connected to love magic in one way or another um, because it is shaped like a bleeding heart. Um, mandrake root, for instance, incredibly poisonous, um, but it shapes like a human. When the root is pulled out of the ground, in some cases it has arms and legs and a body and a head. And so it was used to represent a person, often as a, a doll or a fetish. So it's not solely from the medicinal properties that the magical comes from, it's often the shape, it's about the association. So you take the medicinal association, yes, you then take the physical association from the way it looks, then you take the vibration that people can sense when you're working with that plant, and that becomes the magical association. So. I'm a bit iffy with this, <laughs> but that is just personal. People are obviously going to have differences with this. Do you think there is legitimacy to things outside of science? I don't get to choose the validity of other people's spiritual path. That effect on the endocrine system of the body, if that's what they believe, it's a they're placebo. releasing. I fully agree with what she said then. Um, and it's something that a lot of people don't understand, is that you don't have the right, no one has the right to undermine someone else's belief system if it is doing you no harm and if it's doing them no harm. So if they are going and they're seeking all the medical needs that they, you know, require at the time, if they're going to doctors, if they're going to dentists, if they're going to midwives, if they're doing all of the modern stuff that people are required to do to stay healthy in the modern age, it's no one's business then to undermine someone else's beliefs someone will go to a doctor and there might be nothing wrong with them and as soon as they go to a doctor and they're told that there's nothing wrong with them all the symptoms they were experiencing may just disappear that's a placebo effect but somehow in this instance it being a placebo effect is it being wrong if it affects change on you through the combination of whatever qualities that we can bring together mm -hmm. then that's magic the art of change is maybe another way of putting the word magic the art of change just thought of that actually it just popped out of my mouth that's that good did. write that down yeah. Yeah. And write that one down mm -hmm. magic is the art of manifesting change through the energetic response from what you are putting out into the universe whether you believe it comes from spirits ancestors deities spirit guides whatever it might be wherever it might come from it is the gathering of energy the adding of intention the releasing it out into the world and the receiving of a magical response a magical change that doesn't mean someone cutting their hair is going to cause magical change, that's just a change. But it's a very simplified way of explaining that process of putting out your energy, putting out your intention, using items and manifesting a physical response, an energetic response, a magical response and a magical change into your life as a result of the actions that you've taken in the physical and energetic worlds. 
So, the way I do this, I'm gonna put pinches of things in there. How do you feel about lavender? I am neutral. You are neutral, yeah. good, okay. If you don't hate it, it's good. <laughs> I like that straight away, so, um, it's the one thing I found like lavender is like marmite people love it people hate it I have met so many people that despise lavender and will not touch it with a barge pole and then I've met other people who love the damn stuff and then you get the couple that are like mm, I don't really mind it either way uh, I like the fact they mentioned that though because of everything in this the, the way I I am perceiving this anyway from from an outsider's perspective because obviously I don't know Jacqueline's mindset in all this is it's very much it seems to have been edited together in a way to make it seem as though the the people talking have no knowledge of anything and she has all the knowledge. Like, I don't know if anyone else is getting that kind of vibe from this. The way they're talking, the way they're describing things, the herbs that are being used, the questions that are being asked, they show a real level of knowledge and understanding from the herbalists and the witches that are in this shop right now. They, they show a great level of understanding that can only be gained from having interacted with hundreds of people. You know, how are you to know that a lot of people really dislike the smell and the energy of lavender if you haven't interacted with hundreds of people? But in this, if, you go, if you're looking at it from a Jacqueline perspective, uh, an outsider's perspective, it's been edited in such a way to make them seem as though they actually don't know what they're talking about. They're just spouting off random rubbish. That's how it's edited together. And that definitely isn't true. Every single person that's spoken in this video so far has a great deal of deep, detailed knowledge that I don't think is being kind of expressed to its fullest because of the, the style and the editing that's gone into it. It's made them seem less knowledgeable than they actually are, which is really such a shame. While I'm waking them up, I'm gonna talk to them a little bit. I want them to pull together and do one singular task for you. So Can I say I... something? Yes, absolutely. Hello, in there. <laughs> I would like for you to wake up, please. That's awesome. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm Did gonna I... tell them. Awaken and pull together as one. See, yeah, no, I... <sighs> it's like the best description for this. So, the idea of a mojo bag, it comes from one of the animist traditions where they believe that um, every item contains its own living energy. And in order for the items to work together, everything they put in this mojo bag has about 100 different properties. If you just stick them in a mojo bag, you don't tell them what they want to do, you don't tell them what they need to do, they're just going to be pulling in every which direction because they don't know what they're meant to be doing. So you, you have to inform the herb what it is that you want it to do, otherwise it could be doing any one of the 100 different things that that herb can be used for. And in the tradition, especially with mojo bags, it's... Um, it's a very spiritual practice where the item is alive and a lot of people will breathe life, as they've done here, into the mojo bag in order to energize it, to activate all of that collective energy inside the bag for it to assist in manifesting what it is designed to manifest. And straight away here, Jacqueline is trying not to laugh. And what makes it worse in all of this, for me anyway, because I know how much editing goes into one of my videos, and I'm sitting in the same spot. So imagine how much editing has to go into a video where you're moving around talking to a bunch of different people with different camera angles. It's a lot. And the fact that she kept in her laughing at someone doing a very sacred, very old magical practice should really tell you a lot. And it tells me a hell of a lot anyway. It's... It's always something that I struggle with, particularly in these videos you know, it's not hard to hold in laughter. It's even easier to edit it out. And none of them were done for this video, which I think is a real shame. It's mainly the, the way it's been put together in the end. It's been made to diminish their interaction, to diminish what they're trying to say, and it's been edited in a way to include in things like her looking at the camera jokingly, her laughing, that gives a subconscious um, image to the audience. It, it makes the audience know what they should be feeling in this moment. When in reality it should have been done so that the audience could make their own mind up. Like, you can have your own opinion 
but by editing in this way you influence the way the audience is meant to feel about this situation and that I think I don't I don't jive with at all they're awake now they've got their task ahead of them is there any kind of, of chanting we should do do you want to do that part sure do you want to do the chanting? Do you, were you patting it like burping yeah. it like a baby banish stress banish strife all that's good come to life banish stress banish strife all that's good come to life and then because we're witches even the knots are important okay we're gonna do nine knots nine with right. each knot you're gonna hold it like this and breathe through it and snap it shut as you breathe. What they're doing here is traditional knot magic. It's very commonly done. It's a very ancient practice. It goes back, you know, pre-New World. You know, people were doing this, you know, for as long as sailing has occurred. Um, and yeah, it might look quite unusual from an outsider's perspective, but it has a very deep-rooted tradition within witchcraft. Um, no matter how you choose to do it, this is just one way. What is that doing? It's a spirit trap. As you breathe out, it becomes a spirit you expel and then you trap it in the knot. Okay. <sighs> okay, so as far as the way he's using the word spirit, he used it earlier as well, and every time he's mentioned spirit, he seems to be meaning less spirit, like ghost, fae, demon, ancestor, you know, that kind of spirit. He seems to be meaning it more energy. So, as far as that's concerned, saying spirit almost confuses the situation even more because from an outsider's perspective, although energy is considered spirit a lot of the time, that's what it's referred to as, um, from an outsider's perspective, she might be thinking, ooh, ghost, you know, that kind of spirit. Well, I think what he's actually referring to is energy. You trap that energy into the knot every time you're doing it. You're working with the energy of the time and place, you're working with the energy of the area, like you mentioned earlier, but he referred to it as spirits. So I, I think it's almost confusing the situation more because I do think in this she's thinking, woo, spooky ghost, rather than, you know, energy. I had a really good time today, even though there were some things I couldn't kind of hold back the giggles on. Uh, most of it was, was pretty informational. <laughs> These people aren't devil worshippers. They're not scary. They're not mean. They don't wish harm upon anyone. I'm not walking out of here believing in magic. I'm walking out of here with a greater understanding of people that do believe in magic, though. They don't want to put negativity out into the world, and however you view that, that's good. They just, they want to be good people, and they want good for others, which I think is commendable. Yes, okay, so as much as that bit annoyed me beforehand, I like the fact that she's come out of that with that understanding, even if she doesn't truly understand what magic is, which she clearly definitely doesn't. She knows what it isn't, and that is probably one of the most important things. In a lot of these videos, they will come out of it with the same misconceptions that they went into it with. Jacqueline actually seems to have taken on what they've said, and she's processed it in a way where it's dispelled the misconceptions, and she's aware of that, which I really, really like. And in that, it definitely seemed to show that the editing definitely took out a lot of the information that she maybe learned. It seems like the editing, especially to edit it down into an 11 minute long video, was definitely just snapshots of what she was told. And I think actually it would be nice to see a longer video because I would love to know what else they were talking about, what else they discussed that maybe wasn't, um, you know, camera ready, so to speak. It wasn't something that made it into the final cut, but she definitely spent a day there, you know, if not just a couple of hours, you know, maybe more definitely longer than the 11 minutes in this video so I would actually like to see or like to know what else they were speaking about this time because she definitely came out of it with an understanding that was greater than what we were shown in that video which I can always appreciate you know I can appreciate the fact that she came out of that with a greater understanding a deeper understanding of what it all means why it is done what the people that practice it are actually like I just wish that in the edit that opinion had come across for the entire video because as I said earlier it definitely doesn't seem to be Jacqueline that's caused my opinion on this video not at all if anything it's how it was edited together and I'm not sure if Jacqueline is the one that edited it or if it was edited by an external editor 
but it's certainly been edited in a way to influence the audience one way or another. Whereas, if anything, Jacqueline came out of this with a completely different opinion than what was shown in the edit, which makes me very much think that the editor or whoever edited the video definitely spun some of the content to suit a narrative that maybe wasn't the one that she experienced. Obviously, I can't say for sure because I am not anything to do with Jacqueline or her team or anything, but yeah, it seems kind of strange. She came out of that with a completely different view than what was actually shown her having in the video. It's been a couple of weeks since I visited with the witches and all in all it was a really cool experience. They cleared up so many misconceptions about witches and witchcraft. This is my mojo bag and it is a reminder of, you know, staying happy, staying calm and maybe I'll use it if I'm feeling anxious one day. I don't think any of these objects have actual magical properties, but I am going to put them around my apartment so I'll see them every day. I'll look at the candle and remember to improve my communication. I'll see the mojo bag and remember that I need to take a deep breath and relax. Ah, I know why this is different now. Okay, I know exactly why this video is different now. Okay, when I watched this before, Social Repose was in it. And I think they were dating at the time, but then they had a really messy breakup. Like, I'm so sorry, Jacqueline, that really majorly sucks. But that, okay, that would majorly explain this then. So if they did a candle as well, and then the spell bag, and there was more interaction done, but it was done with social repose. It's no surprise that the video has been edited strangely. Because if she wanted to edit out social repose, she's gonna have to edit out so much content. Okay, savior, okay, that explains so much. That is why it's such a short video. That is why the editing is really weird. It's because they edited out a lot of the context when they edited out social repose. Okay. So the way she said that there, the fact that um, she's still going to have the items around even if she doesn't believe they have a magical energy to them, they're still going to influence the way she feels because they're there and she can see them. Fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. That's all anyone from the witchcraft community can hope for someone outside of the witchcraft community is that even if you don't believe in the magical significance of it, there might be that kind of psychological significance that makes a difference to you. And that is the most important thing. Yeah, that, that, that makes so much sense now, actually. When I look at a lot of these things, I think of good intentions, maybe it's the placebo effect, and they might look at the very same thing and call it magic, and that's okay. I didn't hate this video as much as I thought I would now that I know what happened with it all. So she came out of it with exactly the right thing that I always hope someone comes out of it with. She came out of it with respect for the magical community, with a better understanding of the misconceptions and why they are misconceptions. And even though she came out of it without believing in magic, she came out of it with an understanding of why people might believe in it. Whether it's placebo, whether it's spirits, whether it's energies, whether it's magic. If it works for you, that's fine. And that was what I was waiting for. That's what I was hoping for. I really, really appreciate that out of all of this, that is what she got. So even though the context in the video, the editing in the video made it seem very negative, I really like the fact that out of all of it, that is what she took. That is the most important thing for me. Like the video itself, Slightly problematic because it's been edited in such a way that it does influence the opinions of the people watching it that have no context, that have no idea of what witchcraft is. And also, if you've not seen the original longer video with social repose in it, you likely wouldn't understand how different it is now from then. So it's problematic in the way that there's not enough context to understand and it's been edited in a not nice way but out of all of it Jacqueline took what she needed to get out of it and that is probably the most important thing so yeah that was this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to give it a like it really really means so much to me if you want to see the full video that I watched because obviously I didn't put it all in this video the link will be down in the description box please don't send any hate to anyone discussed in this video. That is not what they are meant for. 
solely meant to give a little bit of insight onto the topics being discussed and just to shed a little bit more light onto what they are talking about. That being said, if you do have any other videos you would like me to react to, feel free to put them down in the comment section. I absolutely love being able to do these kind of videos, so if you have any, please let me know. If you would like to see more videos like this, I will put a link just up here. That is the rest of the videos that I have done in this reaction series. And if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best with magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6pm. So I hope you guys are staying safe, I hope you have a marvellous magical day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!